Happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. I was down there wondering, is really me Mr. Andy talking about? Is it really me? <laughs> um, but it's very good when you can at least be a beacon of light for others around you because you never know who may be in the dark and see that little twinkling light and be motivated by it. So again, happy Sabbath, everyone. Amen. Welcome to those in person and special welcome to those online. As Brother Hopeton started and said, you guys could have been elsewhere, but you're here to worship with us. So um, let me get a ch time check. 2.24. <laughs> so today the topic that we'll be looking at is trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. Um, I'm wondering if it's by coincidence why Brother Hopeton lost that second hymn and we got to sing that last hymn, Blessed and Happy is the Man. Blessed and Happy is the Man. This is just a little improvision. But if you really think about it, brethren, if you hear of someone being blessed, are they usually happy? Don't worry, we'll get to answer that question by the end of this presentation. So there once was a time when a man walked this earth who faced nothing different than what we are experiencing today. The only difference is that he made the choice of being here on earth with us, which we don't have. We don't have that choice, right? Are we here by chance? Are we here by, ch by choice? But I'm sure a lot of persons, if they had the choice as Jesus or even God sending Jesus or Jesus here on earth, would they choose to be here on earth? Or would they do the opposite when it comes to choosing whether to walk or live on this treacherous land, or rather be sitting on the great white throne? Put yourself in his shoe. What decision would you make if you were him? Would you sacrifice yourself to come here on earth, or would you remain in heaven? It's like saying, would you rather be alive during the end days, fighting the beast and the evils of the earth, or would you rather be in the grave, sleeping, waiting on the resurrection. Um, can I get a temperature check? Regardless of the choice you make at the very end of the day, the one man who was perfect and blameless in God's eye has already been through whatever trials and tribulations you may think you are experiencing today. He made it out alive, right? He may have died, but he was resurrected and went to be with the Father. Yes. There are some key words in this presentation that we should know the meaning of. First one is going to be tribulation. What is tribulation? Oh. Tribulation is a cause or great trouble or suffering. A cause or a state or a time of suffering. So right off the bat, to make it relatable to you, it's safe to say you've been through tribulation before. Have you guys experienced a time where you really feel like this was the end, you weren't going to make it, it's really hard, what am I going to do, what am I going to do tomorrow? It's a period of time, a state of being. I'm going through tribulation right now. And we've had presentations before where we hear tribulation talk about counting, right? A time, as I said, of great suffering, dropping down. But when compared to your big brother, Whatever you think you might be going through, it isn't as half as much as what he bore for you. So that you and I can have a chance of being a part of the royal family. Yeah, so no matter what you think you're going through, Bridget, trust me, it's not even an inch of what he sacrificed for you. And he paid the ultimate price. We know the ultimate price is death, right? So you'd hear like, all right, this person committed a crime or whatever. He gets 10, 20, 15 years in prison or whatever it may be. But when you hear of a death sentence, that's pretty much the ultimate price. Yeah. That is it, right? So he went through that tribulation for you and I. There are many examples of tribulation in the Bible. When diseases would spread throughout the land, you'll have leprosy and all these um, different things. These cities that would fall and people had no idea what was killing or getting their empires weak. The destruction of cattle, livestock, pandemics. Whether it be, as I said, leprosy, swine flu, tuberculosis, stuff that people have been through, a period of suffering. All of the above are examples in our ways in which people in general has had some contact with tribulation. So you can put yourself in their shoes, right? 
Now think of all you've been through and tell me if that can be compared to what he faced when he carried that cross for you. Think about it. Can any of you say, yes, I have been through something worse than what Christ has been through? No one can give me a positive answer on that. Jonathan Romain wrote an article, and it was published in The Guardian on February 18, 2020, titled, Suffering Serves No Divine Purpose. He says, suffering serves no divine purpose. Where he explained that those of us who think there is a God who sees us in physical pain, trauma, or suffering is all but a false theology. He thinks that there is something wrong with people who thinks they are learning lessons from suffering. So the guy is saying that if you think you're suffering and the Lord is allowing you to suffer, then you're, you're delusional because why would God allow you to suffer? Right? Now if you think carefully on what he says, then obviously he is blaspheming, right? Because what did Jesus do? He suffered for us, right? Yes, that's right. So pretty much he's saying that, oh Jesus, your God is no, is no, he's of no righteous theology because he's asking you to suffer so you can pay for the sins of the people. What kind of God are you? First Peter 2, uh, 19 to 24 says, For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to credit you? How is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Yes, sir. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you, each and every one of us, an example that you should follow in his steps. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, verse 22, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. So you heard what he do, Virgin, and what we should do? We should entrust ourselves in the one and most high, no matter what we are going through. Verse 24 says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Yes. By his wounds, you have been healed. So clearly, this guy, his, his comment is invalid because we see here it says, by his wounds, you have been healed. So because he suffered, he got pierced in the side. He's the one who carried the cross. We, as people, can be healed. We can be a part of the God family. Amen. So who is he to say otherwise to say, no, which God would allow you to suffer, mm -hmm. right? Galatians 1 verse 4, verse 4 says, Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and Father? So right there, without an ounce of doubt, he paid the ultimate price. Yes, because what can be more painful, as I said before, than death itself? No matter if it's 10, 20 years in prison, death itself is the most painful. His death was supposed to be the end. Key word, supposed to be. So his death was supposed to be the end. What does that say? That's not the end. But it didn't stop there. As the crucifiers had hoped. So all those um, people back then who did what they had to do to stop him and say, okay, this is where we're going to nip it. This is where it's going to stop. No. We are still here today, right, Bridgen? Still believing, right, Bridgen? Yeah. Still carrying on the work, right, Bridgen? Yeah. That's, that's what we're here for. Instead, there is hope in his death. There is oh, hope in his death. The hope that we hold on to each and every day that we will meet him and the Father. His death would have been in vain according to this article, which me and you both know that's not the case. So pretty much he's saying, okay, Christ died right there and that's it. There is nothing more, but we know that's not the case. John 16, verse 33 states, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. When a statement or a sentence or command is started with words like, I have told you, or I have warned you, or words like, didn't I tell you to expect these things? So why are you surprised, brethren? Why are you surprised? You hear of a pre you hear of premeditated murderers and stuff that has been planned out and executed. 
And as such, experiencing hardship has been predefined for you in the Bible. What do I mean by predefinition? There is words in the Bible that allude to the fact that whatever you're going through today, we know what it means. Someone has been through it. This is not the first time this has come up. Deuteronomy 4 verse 30 says, When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. So there, right there, let me repeat. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. So there is a plan that you will return to the Lord your God after everything is said and done. However, there are conditions to be met. You can't just say, okay, I'm just going to be a bad boy and get my heart broken at grade 6, grade 7, 8, 9, 10. That's not how it works, Bridget. There is no other way, right? There is something called trust and obey. Because what, church? There is something called trust and obey. Because what? There is no other way. I was wondering if you guys were paying attention. So imagine your faith is so highly built and your relationship with God is so personal and direct that even through all the negativity, all the storms, everything that you're going through, you're just smiling all the way to the bank of salvation because you know he got your back and you will return to him. Matthew 24 verse 29 says, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened. And the moon will not give its light. Right. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Yes. So right here we see that there will be a time when suffering will be no more. Yes. So if we're anticipating an end, then clearly there has to be one or there has to become, there has to be an end and a beginning to the suffering. This is not me making any deductions, but rather the words that were instructed, that was instructed and written for you. Yes. It's just a matter of how well we are able to interpret this information. Like any other story or instances in the Bible, the only way for us to really overcome the stress and struggle of, tri of tribulations is by having the Holy Spirit guide us. So right here, everything that I've said, now we have a solution or a conclusion as to what we can do to be successful when we are in tribulation and going through trials. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And that is seen in Romans 5, 3 to 5. So here we see that we are not on our own. And it is through him that we are able to move forward and not be drowning in depression and sinking in hopelessness. Like the song says, the poor old struggling uh, seaman. When living in the Lord and the Lord in you, there is no short circuit. I know Deacon Carnegie was an electrician last week, yes. so I won't, I won't steal his thunder. There is no differing on payments. There is no defaulting on the loan. There is no falling short by the wayside. Do you guys believe that? Amen. Oh, you guys believe that? Whoa. <laughs> well, if you did believe that, then you're definitely not paying attention to what I was saying. <laughs> I did say you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to be defaulting, right? There will be suffering. There will be trials and tribulations. You won't be living comfortably, Virgin. And here is how we come to this conclusion. There is a correlation between when one is baptized and the daily struggles of life has increased. Yes, yes. And you all know why, right? When you are baptized and you are born again, what happens? There is a whole new set of rules that applies to you. So if you think you were living hard before or very strict, well, now you're in for a big surprise. Because now you are bounded by the laws of the living and holy, holy God. This is where the Ten Commandments become the pinnacle of your existence. The things that you are now bounded to, the, the, your confined way of living. To deal with the, uh, the uncertainty and the newly imposed restrictions, instructions are there for you to follow. So you're not on your own, brethren. Which will ultimately allow you to have a tunnel vision and be focused on the fruit of being a part of the God family. Romans 8 verse 26 states, 
the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, stuff that we are not able to express, the Spirit will. So we see how important the Holy Spirit is, right? It takes care of us. So we should in turn do what? Take care of the Holy Spirit, right? How do we do that? Because it's not just a one-man relationship. It's a commensalism form of relationship. And for my sister Delisha, who is a bright spark in terms of um, science, um, parasitism would be a tick. So imagine a tick riding around on a cow. A tick like a, a tick, an ant, yeah. a tick. And he's just sucking the blood from that cow. He's feeding himself. He's getting fat. And the cow is uncomfortable. He's classified as a parasite. Yeah. A parasite because the cow is not benefiting from the tick biting him, right? But the tick is, is benefiting. He's getting fat and grown. The commensalism form of relationship now would be between the cow and the bird. How? How so? The cow is now going to provide food for the bird because that tick is the food for the bird. He comes down, boom, pick it off the cow. Now the cow has no more discomfort. So they are both benefiting from that relationship. So in terms of the Holy Spirit, the same can be said for us, right? We are able to overcome fears and getting closer to God by feeding the Holy Spirit with whatever nutrients it needs. We're talking about spiritual food, right? Can anyone give me any um, examples of how we can say feed the Holy Spirit, quote unquote? Read the word. That was my number one, um, Elder Wright. Can anyone give me another example of how we can say we're getting closer to God by feeding the Holy Spirit? By fasting, by meditating on the word, by obedience. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Sister Delisha, you have something? By attending church, right? <laughs> by giving thanks, by trusting and obeying. And you all know we can even go ahead and plug the Ten Commandments in there. We should make sure that we have no other gods before him, right? We should make sure that there's no graven images that we have in our home or whatever of him, right? We should make sure that we're not saying the Lord's name in vain, right, brethren? Right. So all these things will allow us to be closer to God. So dropping down, after all these things, you will be able to redeem Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, yes. joy, peace, yes. patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law, no Bridget. There is no law. So even though you may feel like you are confined, there are still some things that you can just give away. Yes. You can give away faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, kindness. All these things can be experienced if you are really allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. So this is what you can potentially have if everything practiced is executed properly. So no, so ma no matter what you may think you are going through and you won't make it, to, make it through tomorrow, just dwell on the fact that you aren't the first one to experience whatever hardship you may be facing. Whether it be physical, for um, our elder right, it would have been emotional, and you just know that he has paid the ultimate price, which was dying for our sins, so that you and I will have an opportunity of being a part of the greatest family in existence. Thanks for listening.